welcome to this episode of the Voice Fluencer Show featuring Janice Mandel, one of my favorite people, the evocator, and she is going to be one of the Voice Fluencers on the upcoming session of The Voice Den on December 15th. So this is our opportunity to get to know Janice a little bit better and to find out about all the cool stuff that she is doing in the voice space. And so let's bring on Janice. Hello, Janice. How's it going? Terry, my favorite guy. How are you? <laughs> yeah, I'm so good. How are you? I'm uh, excited to be here. You so are fun. an incredible person. And I remember when we met, this is a number of years ago, back at must have been Voice Summit. 2018, 2018 was the year. The first and the second. First and second. You got it. Amazing. And um, well, since then you have, well, you've been you're doing such such incredible stuff. But, but I'm, getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. Before we get into all that stuff, I would love for you to take a moment and maybe introduce yourself to the listeners, to the viewers, and give us a little bit of, of your story, your background. Well, you have an exclusive here, Terry, because most people don't ask. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. The room and people look over my head and go, oh, who's that lady? So here's the thing. I can't wait. Here <laughs> I come we go. by this snooping around, honestly, uh, in the tech space. Because uh, my very first job, I went right to a startup. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a startup. So we all got fired. And huh. the executive, well, because they were bought and destroyed. But the... Um, uh, executive editor of this magazine uh, that I was at, it turned out to, to eventually go to Columbia School of Journalism as an adjunct and then as a professor. And Steve Ross, um, when we were all fired, you know, I was shocked because it was my first job ever. Uh, he was fired first, you know, because they just, I was like the lowly assistant, you know, at the, at the company. And, um, and he pushed me into the spot he let me do a little freelance work with him and then he pushed me into this spot he goes you know you write better than i do why don't you um why don't you be an editor with this guy i know and uh, this guy happened to be james colliger who to this day is a vc in huh. the valley um but that was young jim it was the first guy with a string tie i ever saw in my oh, life wow. you know like a hippie kind of like you know <laughs> west coast guy and i was like a scrappy new yorker so i was just like ah, you know. <laughs> i hope he stays in his office but um that company tracked advanced technologies from lab to commercial use and i was the senior editor acquiring the articles uh well first editing these these it was like torture, you know, but it was environmental literature, energy. Then we expanded to biotechnology and robotics. And oh, if wow. I told you the year, you'd tell me I was lying. But uh, it was really, really long time ago. This is the early 1980s. Wow. And I got to tell yeah, I know. I was, ch I was a child. And, um, and the thing is, uh, EIC, it, it was started out as Environment Information Center. It became EIC Intelligence. And what it became was the first commercial online database company. It was, wow. now we had the pro professional ones. We had LexisNexis since 1970, but this was the first. It, it, it was, it started as a microfiche company, you know, just wonderful research. My huh. nerdy friends and I would sit there. We had people indexing in the background, you know, from all these good schools. And um, yeah, we just had a ball and sat there and made jokes, like wrote fake stories to see if, Anybody could find it about how, like, uh, remember when mercury was, like, contaminating our tuna fish? Yeah, this yeah. This was, yeah, we'd write stories about how this tuna sandwich fell into a vat of mercury and contaminated it. And we, made, like, we even had the indexers oh index it. So, so, oh yeah. so we're just, uh, just trying to make sure everybody's okay. But that was sold to Elsevier Publishing in 1988. So that was cool. And, uh, but that's how I started following these technologies. And at that ah. point, I, acqu I acquired the lead articles for our compendiums, the annual compendiums. So people like Jol Tojani, uh, who to this day, I'm sure is out there on the biotechnology front in Hungary. Um, he, uh, yeah, people like that. And it was very exciting. And so it led me to a job acquiring computer books at Simon & Schuster for their Brady imprint. 
Wow. At, okay. Yeah. At which point somebody said, now, I, you know, I, I walk the line, right? I don't really have to pretend I'm like super young anymore because like, I don't really care if I ever get like a real job, but <laughs> I keep getting a lot of work now because I was one of the original work at home people. And I want to tell you guys something. This is a tale for you because this is what young people want to do right now, right? Huh. I want to run around and get different jobs and, you know, uh, work remotely and all that great stuff. I worked remotely for over, well, I still work remotely, but I worked remotely for over 32 years. Wow. 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 Cool, right? So you are, yeah. you are like the OG of what's going on in the <laughs> world right now. Well, the thing is, you got to watch your street cred, right? So you still have to go to the big brand. So I wrote PricewaterhouseCoopers Growing Your Business Newsletter for 19 years. And those were three, three page articles every other you know month. Uh, you know, interviewing folks about, you know, their businesses and, and, and what things uh, they need to watch for and how to go public and all this great stuff. And then we originated Next Wave for them, which was for seven years, which was all about, uh, it, to this day, PricewaterhouseCoopers has the Money Tree Survey, you know, that shows who's investing in what. And I got to interview all the hottest guys like Brad Feld, all the VCs I admired wow. back in the day. Oh, yeah, he's still around. And uh, just all kinds of folks. So that was just a blast and a half. Um, if you go to my LinkedIn, Janice K. Mandel, you will see Next Wave. And the article I wrote when I predicted, well, that was one of the first articles uh, that the cloud was going to be kind of cool. Wow, that's very, yeah. very cool. Yeah, so cool. Brian Romilly, like he, he like gets this stuff. Like when he talks to me, he's like, you're a visionary. I'm like, yeah, don't use that word. Okay. Because like people will just go, oh, you know, <laughs> don't do it. But the point is I do love connecting the dots and following the patterns. So, you know, um, I worked at home for all these years, you know, doing the, the freelance gig, um, but always looking outside. And so I raised yep. three kids doing this. They're grown and out. And they're, yeah. you know, competing with me in the marketplace. And I love that. <laughs> yeah, they are. And um, they're great. But, um, you know, uh, you have to change. And so when I decided, I had moved during this process from New York City, where I knew, like, where my whole world was. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I had just began as an adjunct professor at Columbia School of Journalism's uh, very first mandatory computers and journalism course huh. um, that my friend Steve Ross, who to this day, I think he was there for, oh God, between adjunct and professorship, he was there for like 31, like crazy years. But he bought me in and and this is a, 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 I just was lucky that I met him because he was one of those people that lifted others up and it wasn't just me. It was like anybody he ever came across whose work he liked, whose thinking he liked whose potential he liked. And and to this day, I thank him. He's an amazing wow. human being. Yeah, and he's just cool, right? And we just, he was always interested in this stuff, bouncing off the walls. And we uh, walked people through, the, there was still dial-up back then, okay? Mm -hmm. And we were telling the journalists, look guys, you gotta know this stuff. We're gonna walk you over to the lab. We're gonna go dial up some things, gonna show you where to find stuff. And then you pay attention to the technology. So that's, you know, where we wow. came. So, you know, I know because I've been challenged. Uh, people will say to me, well, I mean, they know me for my role at Voice Summit, which people may or may not know about back in the day. Um, the very first and second Voice Summits, I mean, other yes. stuff happened in between there, but who cares, right? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, at this point, it's like, read my resume. I, I don't even remember half the stuff. So, but it, but those were the big guns that sort of got me going on this route. And so That's when cool. I see new technology, um, I watch it, I track it. Uh, it's just yeah, old habits die hard, right? So, sure. and it's just cool to me to see where it can go. So I started to notice yeah. um, voice and yep. I started to understand that things were changing. Um, fortunately, I had some wonderful friends in this area. When I moved from New York City, 
-hmm. to Washington, D.C. area because of um, my husband's work. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I was very sad to be out of New York, but I had to meet new people. And so I went out the door to one guy I met at a party who had a mobile app company. And he showed me the ropes of mobile apps. And I said, this is cool. We talked about it. Uh-huh. And I was kind of on the road then to sort of getting out of the house and getting into the entrepreneurial community in this area. Um, for years, over over 10 years, I mean, oh. not much came out of it because people just looked at me and went, eh, this lady, you know, I don't know, you know. Uh, so, but so, but that's that's part of the, that's part of the watch yourself. You know, if you are out there on your own, you need street cred and you really got to prove yourself. So you got to make sure that you're at least working for some people that, you know, are going to either have a big, you know, exciting thing. So when um, Cooper's and Librand and then later PricewaterhouseCoopers, because I started when it was Cooper's and Librand, um, they they didn't even have an intranet at that point. Um, but they had a couple guys that pulled together um Andy, uh, who's uh, uh, actually the CEO of um, Frog, you know, Frog, it's out there. Anyway, uh, one of the guys there, we had one of the first um, things from, uh, uh, it was it was called Reach. And uh, unfortunately, we were knocked out by Lotus Notes. So I know all about big companies and advantages and monopolies and blah, 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 blah. But you know what? I'm all for science. I'm all for competition. And, you know, I'm going to come out fighting and we're helping. But either way, I'm um, not scared of them. But reach was one of those things that um, the creator and I, they, <laughs> I was one of the few people that could get along with one of the salespeople who was really smart, but he was really passionate uh, about his opinions. So they would send me as a buffer. And they flew us out to meet data to say, hey, you know, the internet's coming. And you need a front end. This is before Mosaic. And we said, you need this front end. But our programming guys just were very stubborn about keeping with Unix. So it's like, meh, didn't work out. So they went with Lotus Notes and whatever they did. But anyway, that made my work at home life possible um, through dial up even before that. So I wrote a column for Coopers and Librand um, about business incubation business incubators all over the country. Now, back then, business incubators were all about the real estate. And that's changed hands a few times, right? But yeah, so I would just, you know, follow entrepreneurs. And so I love them. I love entrepreneurs. I love the crazy people who make things and do things just like you, you know, so fun. And then fortunately, you know, in the area, one of the amazing people who happens to live in this town, who I met when doing the mobile app uh, work development um, stuff, uh, was uh, is Pete Erickson, who mm-hmm. you know, of course, we all know from the Open Voice Network, and he really just threw me in the mix and just treated me like all these people. I ran around and you know, I don't know what I did before this thing, everything, um, but I it was trial by fire and really learned a lot and uh, stuck with it for two seasons. Yeah. Um, my husband said it was like I ran away to go to camp with, uh, you know, I ran away to <laughs> join the circus. So it's really fun. I still remember meeting you when I came and I checked in at Voice Summit um, oh that first God. time. And you you ran around. I, I still remember this. Um, I had a bag and I didn't know where to put my bag and stuff. And you ran <laughs> around and found this place for me. And it was it was it was it was awesome. So that, I mean that was the introduction to 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 really to Voice Tech and the Voice Tech yeah. community, the Voice Summit. Yeah. But but since then you've gone on to be so involved with, of course, the Open Voice Network, and yeah. so. Why don't you share with us a little bit about kind of your roles with the Open Voice Network, some of the things that you've worked on, the just, I I mean, there's so much you could talk about, I know, with regards to the Open Voice Network, Um, (laughs) where where it even begin. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the Open Voice Network and some of the projects you've been involved in? Oh, my pleasure, right? So it's been a year and eight months. I just looked this up because, you know, I have to Google myself before I talk about myself because I don't remember. (laughs) Every day seems like the next, but, you know, uh, I, it, it, it's, I saw John Stein at the very first voice lunch, you know, voice lunch happened 2020 when, you know, everybody was just despondent, you know, we were all isolated, trying to work on things. And, um, you know, it was sad. So I went to the global one and I just love the guys there so much. 
um, who started it, of course, uh, Carol and Michael. Uh, and, um, and then it was just such a well, it was the most welcoming community, actually. Um, I didn't get the same vibe about being older, about being female, about being not a technical programmer. Mm -hmm. To this day, people will say to me, well, have you programmed that blah, blah, blah? And I'd mm -hmm. say, well, no. Mm -hmm. And I'm cool mm -hmm. with that because mm -hmm. I do spot trends and I can tell you a few in the course of the Open Voice Network. Um, you know, we really needed to. And so I saw John Stein at Voice Lunch and uh, he said, uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, and I just hit him up with a note and I said, I really want to help. You know, so he goes, yeah. And he turned out to be an awesome human being yes. uh, who really just uh, sees people for who they are and yes. uh, minds people's talents. And uh, he's the perfect leader for that thing because his, his heart's in the right place um, as well as mine. I mean, I, fortunately, I, I don't care if I made a dime out of it um, at this stage. You know, it's kind of like I'd like the world to be a little better. And I think this is a great way to do it. Um, you know, we've had our troughs with voice, you know, we, we, it didn't take off like so fast, like what happened, but you know what, it's complicated. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one of the first projects at the Open Voice Network uh, was like, oh gosh, we got to have this media and entertainment group and we got to figure out what's happening in Hollywood behind the scenes. And we got, you know, Donald Buckley, who was a marketing genius at uh, Warner Brothers. And I was just so excited to meet him, you know, and just, uh, just talk to him about uh, some of the stuff he knew. And together, you know, he got me behind closed doors and uh, with some of his folks in the industry. And we went, holy gosh, there's a, not a lot going on. And there's a lot, going, you know, wow, mm -hmm. we got to dance as fast as we can. So I started do, going on the research train because research, you know, the nerd thing never leaves your head. <laughs> so I can research with the best of them. I find it if you need it. And, uh, you know, we looked around and said, okay, here's what we do now. We know that there are some patterns out there and we can see that the audio natives, right? The people who uh, were already into audio were the first ones to hit the mark. So NPR, you know, they, right. Um, right. they jumped in there and they said, hey, Alexa, when you say play the news, we want to be the news, okay? Sure. You know, well, now they're well placed to be part of their holistic experience, you know. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when I miss New York, I say, Alexa, play WNYC. And I hear my people uh, <laughs> in, the, yeah. in the same yeah. accent. I start speaking with a New York accent immediately <laughs> right after that. So, but it's that experience. I can be in my, and soon we'll be, you know, we hear them in the car. Soon we'll be able to interact with them in the car as we know that's all happening. So they really kind of got this right. They're looking at this holistic thing, you know, and then you look at the way that, um, you know, different platforms came up like uh, Spotify and Pandora, you know, they were neck and neck and, you know, it, it, streaming music became a commodity. You got to keep moving, right? So uh, we saw what happened when Spotify just became an all audio situation and started acquiring Gimlet Media and, you know, follow the money, right? Mm -hmm. So Gimlet Media and Anchor, and then it had its own like, um, uh, hey Alexa, you know, its own voice app. Well, cause you know where that's going, that's going right to the car, right? Just to ask for these uh, podcasts now that they're creating. And, uh, you know, it's sort of sorry. So, so I wrote the paper with Donald Buckley Mm -hmm. called the future of here it is i keep it on my desk at all times because i can't remember examples anymore <laughs> there it is the future of media, of and, media entertainment. and entertainment informed by voice. by voice and it was supposed <laughs> to be a very short document but it got super long wow. because there were a lot of cool examples so um so that you can find on the open voice networks website which um I'm going to be looking at tomorrow to see if we can kind of like soup that up a little bit to make it easier to find. So <laughs> I'm taking, hit me up, DM me if you got any suggestions for that website before that's tomorrow awesome. noon, Eastern time. Um, so and that was just cool. your first paper though with the OVN because it goes that's on from there. Yeah, exactly. then, did. So, well, here's go, go ahead. Go right. ahead. So my rule evolved with the Open Voice Network so that I volunteer purely uh, in the ethical use task force. That's why I went in there 
um, because I wanted to make sure that privacy, security, all that stuff, really in good shape um, so that we could push forward and, mm -hmm. and win. And, um, and so, uh, and I, again, I did that in the name of science. I really think, you know, for accessibility's sake, for, you know, people who need this help, it's essential. And it can just bring so many people into the world that, that into the digital world that don't have it now. You know, um, I gotta say, I, I'm kind of a late bloomer. Um, the, uh, I was invited to be on the as a member of the advisory council of the George Washington, um, let's say, digital marketing certificate program wow. <laughs> at the business school at uh, George Washington. And that was kind of cool because they found me from my digital activity. You know, wow. So, so I that's think great. that's pretty cool. That's and I cool. hope to think that we start to see a little more of privacy and security matters in that. Now, if my image freezes, don't worry, I'm not that cold. It's just a little chilly in here. Anyway. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh my goodness, you like, there's so much that we could cover. Really, you like, you. I'm here. I just, for the sake of time, I'm just I'm just trying to think where to, where to go with this next. Oh, um, so the rest of you, the stuff at Open Voice, I can tell you yeah. real quick. Yeah, Sorry, please. I, I got myself all off track. So, no, okay, no, no. so yeah. I started out Ethical Use Task Force, really important to me. Um, John Stein uh, brought me in to then write and edit. And for that, it is a, that's a paid gig um, to write and edit as a contractor because he Wonderful. brings in. Well, I think what's cool is that we don't just sit there scratching our heads, you know, making stuff up for guidelines. We, we bring in ethical use, ethical, you know, professors of ethics, professors of you know, different experts in their fields. Mm -hmm. And some of them are on retainer now. Um, in, in order to advise us. So, you know, we're making a real best effort to get out there with that. And so in that capacity, I participated in the synthetic uh, voice workshop and uh, that was to study. Now, synthetic voice isn't voice per se, you know, it's uh, when we look at deep fakes, I know everybody hates that, uh, but you know, it's the voice, but if you strip out the voice, it's the part that they weren't real good at. Well, now they're really, good at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super good. And then, you know, people like Veritone, well, they're sponsors uh, of the Open Voice Network because they're really, their business model relies on the fact that, you know, people honor people's privacy because they want to, you know, take the voices of maybe actors that, uh, um, you know, are insuring themselves and um, uh, be able to use their voices should something happen to their voices, but also... Um, just to be in two places at once, to do last minute editing in a, in a film. Maybe they got sick, they lost their voice. So, I mean, that's all cool stuff. Um, we just don't want like people imitating world leaders. And then there's like no real indicator that that's the case. So, you know, we, we just got to be careful because like the world is big and people are, you know, varied. So that was cool. And I wrote that paper that uh, will be released on the use of synthetic voice because here's the thing. When you then take synthetic voice and push it out through speakers and through these different mm -hmm. apps, then it becomes an issue um, because we want to make sure that what we're hearing, we can trust. Trust is a big deal. And it's a lot of that going right now, right? So there's that. Yeah. And then um, there's there must be another group, Media and Entertainment, right? That Yeah, so I did join the Media and Entertainment group as well be working on their speaking uh, points. Um, but I just love the group because the people in there are just so interesting. Um, Everybody that know. I've met from the o from the Open Voice Network is, they're, they're all just incredible people. And, and, and I guess I guess the credit really goes to John for for cultivating that 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 group because he's, he's- The tone yeah. comes from the top. He's, an, he's a remarkable human being as well. I, I agree with you 100%. He's- Yeah. So yeah, so you'll great. see him at the uh, uh, Voice Summit uh open voice networks got a crew going there unfortunately i'm not able to make it this year but i have an announcement to make <gasps> i'm excited <laughs> share is, is this I, an exclusive too uh it's an exclusive i will be re-emerging uh assisting a voice summit <gasps> and it's varied projects bring it in i so hit me up 
this is your wow. notification out there businesses that are doing very cool use cases you want a little yes. showing off hit me up and we'll talk Ooh, because boy oh boy oh yeah oh yeah i mean come on it was like pulling teeth to get these use cases back in the day now you know we've got some great stuff starting and happening and you know so that is very exciting amazing. yeah oh that's so yeah. great that's so great and they're yeah. so lucky to have you so lucky to have well, you. Well, I got to tell you, there's one more little thing going on. More, um, more news. <laughs> well, you know, during this process, um, I've met some amazing people in the industry that really know their stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my background is, you know, the journalistic view, and I never want to be the story. And here I am talking. So that kind of makes me uncomfortable. But, um, you know, I thought it was important not to have misinformation out there. So I like to talk and, you know, looking at different patterns and all that good stuff. Um, I forgot where I was going really with that, but here you go. Um, there's some, some great patterns going on out there um, that I'd like everybody to notice um, that, the, you know, people are becoming, companies are merging and they're becoming platforms. They're changing their strategies, right? You've got Spotify, which became a winner by, you know, going to audio and then developing. They bought um, Betty Labs, which has Locker Room, which, you know, right. that has an audience of sports people. So that you start to look around mm -hmm. and there is no industry, you know, on touch base. Okay. So now where I was going to go before was among the many amazing people um, that we've met in this process. Um, there are folks that we always call on to review our papers, be, to, you know, to point out our mistakes, right? So, or to, to add things. And one fellow um, that I, I guess I can't name him, uh, but he was very, very, very involved in the original voice uh, stuff and mm -hmm. um, way back in the day. And he uh, makes synthetic voices. And in the interim, a dear friend of mine, turns out, was losing his voice. Oh, wow. And so that fellow is making my friend a voice. <gasps> wow. And this is also an exclusive. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Someone from the, from, from, uh, the uh, voice lunch group. Yes. Marek uh, Shapinsky from yes. Poland yes. has a agreed to attempt to make a, a special little app to launch that voice and to use that voice. So wow. it, it's um, so real life, right? Real life. Real life. Uh, yeah. So you practice what you preach and, and you just go, oh, my God. Uh, wow. So that's a That's a oh, that's a great to story to. Uh, yeah. To put well, it all together. We'll follow really. up on it. Definitely we'll follow up on it. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's the kind of thing that, um, sometimes makes me wake up in the morning and go, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Yeah. You know, it's all good. Oh, it's but, so uh, good. yeah. So the it's stuff so that we want to do, uh, you know, oh, gosh, I've kept you so long past your time, Terry. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, this is the thing. When I start chatting with you, it's just like, oh, I just want to hear more and more and more. I want to, I want to hear all the stuff. You're, you're, you're doing such great stuff. Okay. Here, here I'm going to finish off with this last question. Yeah. Um, I lied. I'm going to finish off with two last questions. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, one and two question. Number one is I am absolutely thrilled that we get to have you as one of the voice influencers on the upcoming voice dance show. So as you know, the way it works is people get to ask you questions as one of the voice influencers. So here's kind of a, here's a kind of a convoluted question for you now, but it's what kind of questions would you like people to ask you? So what sort of topics, I mean, and I think I, I think I kind of have a sense now just from this conversation, what kind of topics you like to talk about, but, but what are the kind of things that people would like, you would like people to ask you? Well, I'd like you to ask us, of course, um, what we think about, uh, the future of the worldwide voice web. Ah, I like um, it. I know it's kind of an interesting little topic there. Yeah. Uh, you got a preview if you went to the Stanford uh, Human AI uh, workshop for that, but um, fascinating stuff. So I'd love you know to to talk about that. Yeah, um, yeah, and some of the potential uh, out there. But I also love people to tell me their problems with mm. voice. You know, like what uh -huh. are some of the questions they have? 
Um, because my concerns are, are the ones where, you know, you, you, you can have an idea on your own, but if you're not talking to the audience, if you're not talking to your, your, uh, the people who are going to be affected by what you're creating, you're missing the boat. Mm. And, um, you know, we learned that when original training data came out with all this bias stuff. And I don't want to like shoot my whole uh, information load here, but you know, it, it's, it just, you gotta be careful, um, what you're, what you're putting out there. And, um, uh, there was a, you know, when Spotify came out with its, uh, uh, it, they just had a patent sitting there, innocent patent. Now companies make patents out there all the time, but a bunch of musicians were watching them closely when they were trying to become a platform and they, they noticed that the patent came out and then they mm. noticed that they were on, you know, uh, going to really make a go of all audio and uh, they protested. They said, uh, well, because they, the patent was so that they could hear not only people's voices and the emotion in them and the, the physical symptoms and whatever they had, but they, they wanted to know at that point what mood somebody was in and what environment they were in. Were they crowd, in a crowded room? Were they alone? Um, so that it could suggest songs for them. And people lost their minds. And the ACLU got involved and said, don't make this patent, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so what happened was they didn't get out in front. I mean, honestly, they did the right thing. They just made it, you know, they, they thought maybe it could be part of his strategy and they, they, they created a patent. But pe the, the people spoke. And I think that was an early indication that it's public opinion is changing. I am on the Faves uh -huh. app. Um, I was asked to, F-A-V-E-S, anybody interested in this stuff? Um, uh, it is some guys from Stanford put together this app called Faves, which, uh, just curates a lot of content. Bradley Metrek and I were both asked to be curators of voice specific information. And to date, I mean, like 4,000 people have followed me there and over 40,000 have checked in. So that's wow. kind of interesting, in, uh, you know, uh, yeah, kind of interesting. You got your so finger it, on it, the pulse of it all. Well, you know, so. I think analysis is really cool. I've been a trend spotter mm -hmm. from way back. Um, you know, I can't help it. I just, you know, I, I kind of grew up in the in the startup thing. And then once you get there, you know, I did work for the big companies. So, you know, the PwCs and the Deloitte's and the, those guys, you know, I was doing freelance, I did white papers for these guys. And, you know, a, a lot of that stuff, it's very important to do that um, so that you know what's, how things evolve in politics and how people think and what limitations there are and, you know, where you see opportunities um, around that too. So amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So did I avoid your question? Well, no, 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 that was great. That was great. I mean, there's, there, <laughs> it's not surprising. There's so much that people are going to be able to ask you about and, 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 and talk to you about. So, so I'm just really looking forward to that. My last Let little rip. part. <laughs> I, know, I know you're, 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 you're like, you're good with anything, whatever people want to ask. It's, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Thank you so much, Janice. My last question is, is actually more of just an opportunity for you to just, I'd love for you to just sort of share, you know, what, what are specific websites or resources or ways that people can get in touch with you just so that they know how to get in touch with you if, if they want to do so. I'm a big, I'm in the Twitter thing at Janice K. Mandel. So okay. please come to me there. I, I really struggled to break 2000 followers because why would anyone follow, want to follow me? I don't work for a company they know. Be careful out there, all you all you nomads. Cautionary tale: I was young once, right? There you go. And now I'm that lady. And when you guys talk about senior citizens and old people and stuff like that, you better think about me. All right. <laughs> so I don't want my home for the aged to like be ill-equipped. All right. You've got you've and got I these want, like, secret. Privacy talents now that we've exposed on this show so so you are going to be getting hit up now on twitter all over the place so My pleasure. Uh, oh it's wonderful janice we'll start the music here thank you so much for spending some time uh with me with the listeners with everybody and i am so looking forward to having you on the voice stand as one of the voice fluencers december 15th five o'clock p.m pacific Everybody can go to thevoiceden.com to grab their free seat and have a chat with you and everybody else. So Janice, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thanks, man. I love it. Bye. Bye-bye.